on the left side i'm writing the class component first i need to import react for every class component we need to uh, extend react or component so let me create one class component extends react or component then i'm gonna write the render function render function is the most important function of a class component because in render function you return how your view should look like so basically i'm writing jsx i'm returning on jsx object so this is a basic class component this is also called a classic react component and i'm coming to functional component for functional component also you need to import react for function component you just need to write a function and you have to return um, how your view should look like and that is the jsx part now i'm coming to the props but how we do uh, show the props how would you access the props in class component and functional component in class component you can access the context this to access the props so let's say i'm passing name as a props so i can use this that props that name to show the name and in functional component the first argument of the functional component is the props so you can just use that uh, that object to access the props also if you're using uh, es6 restructuring you can directly destructure the props and just get uh, the props that you want so as you can see here the functional component is definitely more cleaner than the class component but class component also has some advantages i'm going to add some more uh, items in the class component you might have noticed that class component has a constructor in the constructor you can initialize some of the things after props the next thing we normally do is the state setting state in class component what we do is we use this to state to initialize the state so we are adding one state called h okay so this is our state this dot state dot h and whenever we want to change the state we use set state but in case of function component we can't use the set state because we don't have a this object so for functional components uh, the recommended way of adding state is using the hook called use state all you have to do is you import use state from react and then you, init you pass your initial state the so use state returns one array you can destructure the array to get the states the first item of the array is the state initially that is 20 and the second one is the function to set the state you, then you can directly use the state and whenever you want to set the state use the set state so here i should uh, name the function as set h this is also more cleaner than the class approach now there are some rules of calling use state the first most important rule is you should always call use state in the same order this function component is going to be called multiple times and each time you need to call your use state functions in the same order let's say we are uh, calling it twice first one is age and second one let's say country initial state is let's say usa now we are calling these two use states the first one is age second one is country and you should always call the use states in the same order because see we're not providing any information to react uh, that what is the what is this 20 and what is this usa what is that we're not adding any keys right so how the react will know that the first one is the age and the second one is the country because we're calling in that order so react stores the order when you are calling the use state again you will get the same age and the same country and if you uh, use the setter function set age or set country react is going to change that state next time when you will call the use state react will return a new value next i'll show you the lifecycle event uh, component did mount we use this lifecycle hook to uh, add some code when the component is mounted for the first time but we don't have anything like that in the functional component but we can use a hook called use 
effect so in use effect we have a callback and here inside the callback we can do the same thing as component inbound so use effect is called whenever the second argument changes in the second argument we can provide some value so we are providing some value but whenever the second argument changes react is going to call the use effect again so if you are not providing any value in the second argument in that case react is going to call this use effect only once so you can easily initialize our our uh, initializing code here then next uh, why not add some events we're adding on button on click so yes, we're adding an on click handler handle click we're doing something here on the handle click and we're calling this handle click here now you might have noticed that uh, if we use something like this you have to bind the context such things are not required in the functional component because you don't have any context so let's say i'm adding one button here as well on click okay let's say i'm creating one callback function handle click now you might think that this is inefficient right? because every time when you are calling the functional component this handle click is going to be initialized to handle that we have one hook called use callback so basically what you do is you provide your function uh, your callback function as the first argument and second argument you provide you provide some arguments when you want your callback to be executed but if you are not providing anything then uh, react will always use the same callback so it is going to return on cached version of the callback so let's say I have handle click equals to this use callback. So in this case, even if you're calling the function component multiple times, handle click will point to the same callback. So you don't have to call it multiple times. You don't have to uh, create the callback multiple times.